Coming up on this edition of Carolina Insider, we show you where USC students can pick up professional clothing for free. Then we tell you how Samantha Josephson's suspected murderer failed to appear in court yesterday. But first, the final candidates for new university president are coming to campus, and they're bringing with them a little bit of controversy. The search committee did not look like us, and as a result, neither do the finalists. Carolina Insider starts now. Hello and welcome to this edition of Carolina Insider. Our top story today, USC presidential candidates continue to visit campus. Each candidate is appearing in a public presentation before students and faculty, building questions and making case for the faces for themselves. But the presidential search is not without controversy. A group of students and faculty is calling for a more diverse group of finalists, since all four are men. Joseph Walsh fielded questions about that on Monday during his visit, agreeing that diverse voices on campus are critical, and saying that five of the eight associates he hired at Northwestern were women. William Tate came to campus yesterday, Robert Caslin is coming here today, and tomorrow, the final candidate, John Applegate, will be here for his presentation and Q&A. The forum each lasts an hour and start at 11.30 and 3.30 in the Hollings Library program room. Carolina Insider has been following the candidates this week. Here now with that in the cocky spotlight is reporter Emily Acey. Emily? Thanks, Eli. Joseph Walsh came to campus Monday as the first of four candidates for the next USC president. Like all the candidates, he appeared before campus stakeholders at a public presentation. As Eli mentioned earlier, he addressed the issue of gender diversity. He also talked about and gave answers to common questions like where's tuition going and what will he do differently. Another pressing question was five points and what he would do to help with the safety of students. On that topic, critics called his response vague. The issue, the larger issue needs to be solved. We need to have an environment that is safe for our students and safe for uh, the community that is more than just the students, it's the faculty and staff. Professor Robert Coslin is speaking today and Professor John Applegate is speaking tomorrow. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Emily. In other news, the suspect charged with the kidnapping and murder of U of SC student Samantha Josephson did not appear in court as expected earlier this week. Nathaniel Rowland was originally scheduled for a bond hearing Monday. That would have been his first time to appear at, before a judge since being charged. Since he has not posted bond, it was decided by the 5th District Solicitor's Office that he did not have to attend the hearing. His upcoming court dates have been yet to be announced. For many families, springtime means spending nights and weekends at the sports field. But a new study shows your kids could be at increasing risk of injury. As Summer Hector reports, that causes concerns for parents, coaches, and the medical community. On most afternoons and weekends, if you come to Manchester Meadows in Rock Hill, you'll see kids of all ages playing soccer. Sierra Barnes is a camp director and youth development coach for a travel youth club here. I know there have been within our club as well, like ACL injuries, which are massive. And I know from back home it's similar, especially with, it, with girls. According to a new study from the Centers for Disease Control, sports-related injuries have become the leading cause of emergency room visits for 12 to 17-year-olds. It's not just ACLs either. Here at the ER, they've also seen an increase in ankle injuries, elbow injuries, back injuries, and concussions. If you're not properly uh, strengthened, uh, conditioned, you're susceptible for bring, inviting all those types of injuries on. Paul Beckwith is the Director of Performance at Apex Athletic Training, where youth athletes come for physical therapy. Early specialization is not good, meaning one sport year round, no breaks. Coaches say they're trying to work around the injuries in many ways, like getting young athletes to participate in multiple sports in order to develop a variety of muscles and skills. Kids are then streamlined to one sport, and their bodies become streamlined to one set of movements, and when anything happens outside that, that's when a lot of injury can occur. Injuries that no parent wants to see their child suffer. For Carolina Insider, I'm Summer Hector. Finally today, as this semester comes to an end, for some students, interviews are just beginning. On the university's campus, Carolina Closet provides free business clothing for all students. The Carolina Closet is lo located in the Blatt PE Center. It's open Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 1 until 5 p.m. Just remember to bring your Carolina card. You have to have it if you want to take any of these clothes.
That's it for this edition of Carolina Insider, a student production here in the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communications. We'll see you back here on Friday.